The periodic table of elements, a marvelous thing created by man to represent the materials of the universe. In this video I show how I made my own small collection of it. I wanted to make it from identical cubes, so the different elements could be easily compared with each other. Of course I can't get a cube of oxygen or helium, because well, I can't keep the table at minus 220 degrees, at which point oxygen would become a solid. So I decided to go with little 1 cubic centimeter blocks, otherwise it would be way too expensive for a lot of materials. A small 1 cubic centimeter block of rhodium for example is already 12,000 euros. I decided to make a table of elements in Cura so I could 3D print the stand for all the little blocks. After 15 hours of printing, I sanded the whole surface to smooth it down. Next I applied XSC 3D as a protective layer. After letting it dry, I sanded it again to get a nice matte looking finish. So here we have bismuth, the main ingredient in the medicine for an upset stomach, Peptobismol. This is really quite odd when you consider that the element to the left of bismuth, bismuth has to go right here, to the left of bismuth is lead. So toxic that entire Toy industries have been turned on their heads trying to eliminate it. And the element to the right is polonium, a deadly radioactive poison used in recent times by Russian bad guys to eliminate inconvenient people. Next we have carbon, with the atomic number of 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, well known as the element of life, with a separate chemistry branch called organic chemistry because there are so many possible molecules you can form with this element. This pure black form is just a piece of graphite, like charcoal. And on the back of all these blocks, you can also see the density and the purity of the, of the element. So this is 99.9% .9 pure, and it has a density of 1.82 uh, grams per square centimeter. So, carbon. Then we have magnesium, the first of the truly marvelous structural metals. Beside being strong, light and easy to machine, it's also highly flammable. Magnesium is so flammable that you can light a ribbon of it with a match. And even early photographic flashes were nothing more than a rubber bulb used to blow a puff of magnesium powder into a candle flame. Next we have aluminum, or however you want to pronounce it. Aluminium, aluminum, I don't know. Density of 2.7. Uh, this element has to go right here. It's very light but yet strong enough to form the structure of most airplanes. Next, the element with 22 protons and electrons per neutral atom, titanium. Titanium has to go right there. It stands for strength, both in name after the Greek gods Titans, and in fact, also used in rockets for its tremendous durability and lightweight. So, Next up we have iron, the only element to have an age named after it, the other ages being stone and bronze age, which are not pure elements. So it has to go right here. It will probably rust like this because it's now exposed to oxygen and it doesn't have any protective layer because well it's just the pure form. As you can see 99.99. So I also got the next four elements in the list. First up we have Cobalt, right next to Iron. 
often used in the toughest steel alloys used for drills and machine bits. Then we have nickel, chemically very similar to cobalt. And then this one you'll probably recognize, of course, the beautiful element copper. It can be toxic, but it takes special effort eating large amounts of copper sulfate or routinely eating acidic foods that have been stored in copper containers for a long time. Right next to nickel, copper is the only reasonably priced metal that isn't more or less grey. Quite a remarkable fact if you think about it. Then we have zinc, which was used as a casting metal with copper to create brass. Next, right next to copper with the atomic number of 30, which means 30 protons and electrons. Next we have three more uh, transition metals. This one is called, if you want to focus, zirconium, which has to go here. Then we have niobium and molybdenum. For niobium, niobe was the daughter of tantalum, son of Zeus. Look at the periodic table like this one and you will find her element niobium right here. Just above tantalum, which should be right here. Sadly, the element below tantalum is not named Zeusium. It was named Dubnium in 1997 after much argument, none of which included a proposal to call it Zeusium, which is quite a pity. Next we have the non-toxic, stays shiny forever, easy to melt and cast into minutely detailed shapes, not horribly expensive, tin, with the symbol of SN, which has to go right here. And then next we have antimony with the symbol SB, which go right next to tin. It's clearly metallic, yet brittle and more crystalline than ordinary metals. Just to go straight here. Then we have my absolute favorite tungsten, with a density of about 20 grams per cubic centimeter. It has almost the same density as gold. It's very heavy, I can feel it. Here you can see the density, it's focused almost 20 grams per square centimeter and tungsten has to go right below molybdenum and finally we have yet another heavy element lead as you can see it's already scratched because it's a very soft metal in comparison with tungsten for example which has a melting point of 3400 degrees celsius while lead melts at 327 degrees so it's a lot softer than, for example, tungsten. And lead has to go right beside bismuth. So guys, this is my collection at the moment. I already have 17 elements, but I have a piece of silicium metal, some indium, 100 grams of indium, and some gallium. Well, with gallium I can't do anything, or well, make cubes out of it, because it melts at 30 degrees. Celsius, so yeah, when it's a little bit hotter in this room, it will just melt. Um, but in future videos, I will try to make some cubes, one centimeter cubes, out of this silicium metal and probably out of this indium. So be tuned for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much, and I see you next time.